Orban's peace visits to Russia and China. European Union's rage over Orban's peace missions. And the upcoming Bonhomie with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Former American President Donald Trump is said to meet with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Florida on Thursday, July 11th, less than a week after he met with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. The visit is likely to fan concerns that the Hungarian leader is working as an intermediary between Putin and Trump. Trump and Putin professed a fondness for one another during the US president's first term, often garnering bipartisan criticism. More recently, the Republican leader has said he believed he could convince Putin to end his war in Ukraine and release Americans detained in Russia if he were elected to a second term. Corbyn will travel to Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort after the conclusion of the NATO summit in Washington. His visit to Moscow became a central point of discussion at the gathering, where other allies pledged additional air defenses for Ukraine in its continuing campaign against the full-scale Russian invasion that began in 2022. One of the people familiar with the Orban visit said Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee, has not asked the Hungarian leader to lay the groundwork for some sort of Ukraine-Russia peace deal. The Hungarian leader and Trump have cultivated a close relationship, with Orban visiting Mar-a-Lago in March. Trump fetted him with a tour of his residence, dinner with former First Lady Melania Trump, an hour-long meeting with senior aides, and a musical performance by a band covering Roy Orbison songs. President Joe Biden seized on that meeting at a subsequent political rally in Philadelphia, saying Orban doesn't think democracy works and was looking for dictatorship. You know who he's meeting with today and down in Mar-a-Lago? Orban of Hungary, who stated flatly he doesn't think democracy works, he's looking for dictatorship. The only member of NATO, that's who he's meeting with. I see a future where we defend democracy. Not diminish The Biden administration has criticized Orban over his friendly relations with Putin, as well as legislation in Hungary that the State Department warned could intimidate and punish critics of Orban's government. The European Union's legal service said Orban's diplomatic freelancing with Vladimir Putin on his solo trip to Moscow last week contravened the EU's treaties. The Hungarian Prime Minister's unannounced visit to Russia in a bid to promote peace talks with Ukraine drew sharp condemnation from EU and NATO allies who promptly said Orban did not represent them in his talks with the Russian president. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg told CBS News' Face the Nation on July 6 that Orban made it clear when he came to Moscow that he didn't go there on behalf of NATO. Of course, uh, Viktor Orban is not representing NATO uh, at these uh, meetings. Uh, he is representing uh, his own country. Um, and Prime Minister Orban, um, also when I met him a couple of weeks ago, we, uh, we also discussed uh, his upcoming visit to Kiev. So you may know that he also visited Kiev recently. Um, what is important is that uh, all allies, uh, also Hungary, uh, agrees that uh, that Russia is the aggressor uh, and uh, Russia is responsible for the war and that uh, uh, Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty must be uh, respected. Officials also said Orban violated a legal provision that calls on all members to perform foreign policy activities unreservedly in a spirit of loyalty and mutual solidarity. European Council President Charles Michel, who represents the EU's 27 members, said, this was a political mistake to go to Moscow. In 10 years, I have never seen such a severe reaction from 26 other countries to the actions of one country. A yellow card. This is a problem. This way of working is not acceptable. Orban, on the other hand, said his trip to Moscow was aimed at finding a path towards peace in Ukraine as soon as possible. The Hungarian Prime Minister said, I am criticized that I am a friend of Putin, but I am a friend of the Hungarians first.
Second, I am a friend of peace. That's very important. I am a friend of peace. The reason why I am negotiating with Putin is because I'm looking for the shortest and quickest way how to stop this war. Orban said that he had earlier made the same proposal during a meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who rejected the idea, believing that Russian forces could take advantage of the situation. According to Orban, the Russian president also said the Ukrainians would use the ceasefire against Russia. Orban also paid a visit this week to President Xi Jinping in China, following a trip to Azerbaijan earlier this month. Hungary took over the six-month rotating presidency of the EU Council of Ministers, a role that allows members of Orban's government to chair meetings, on July 1st, just four days before his trip to Moscow. However, other capitals believe Orban abused that status to give his meeting with Putin more weight. Putin is under EU sanctions, and the bloc's stated position which Orban has agreed to condemns Moscow as the aggressor in the Ukraine war. Orban endorsed immediate peace talks to end the war, in direct contravention of stated EU and NATO policy that there can be no such discussions without Ukraine's backing. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said any leader visiting Russia or China must make NATO's positions clear that the military alliance is not going anywhere, Ukraine's not going anywhere, and the European Union is not going anywhere. European Council President Charles Michel described the recent strike on a Kyiv hospital as a war crime, saying it showed Putin's political answer to Orban's so-called peace mission. Michel said, In an attempt to divide the Union, we have to avoid falling into a trap. We don't want to punish ourselves in a collateral effect of trying to punish someone. Let's be smart. Several diplomats told the Financial Times that many EU member states have discussed boycotting the traditional informal ministerial meetings to be held in Hungary during the country's presidency. A smaller group of capitals has also begun informal discussions on how to use the EU treaty to restrict Orban's room for manoeuvre during the presidency. Some EU officials have also privately floated stripping Hungary of the rotating presidency, one senior diplomat said, European Union institutions should not have fallen into Orban's trap in the first place. The bloc's legislation should be used to protect the Union. Despite the wide condemnation, Hungary says it doesn't know what all the fuss is about. At a packed press conference in Brussels on July 10th, Hungary's EU minister Janos Spoka said, these discussions were not on behalf of the EU, these were not conducted based on a mandate from the European institutions. These were not conducted in the name of the European Union or any of its institutions. The Prime Minister is aware of the responsibilities that the Presidency of the Council of the EU entails, and in the spirit of this responsibility, he debriefed the President of the European Council and heads of state and governments on these visits. An EU official said while European capitals are struggling to go beyond public condemnations of Hungary's rogue presidency, the options, in reality, are limited. Estonian member of the European Parliament Riho Terras is rallying support in the European Parliament to call on the bloc's top leadership to trigger Article 7 of the Treaty on the European Union against Hungary. It's the most serious political sanction that can be imposed on a member country and involves suspending its right to vote on EU decisions. But it's also a nuclear option that European capitals have shied away from so far. The EU official said Orban is smart. He knows exactly how far he can go without risking immediate retaliation. Two other EU diplomats said several EU ambassadors have threatened practical consequences if Orban continues to pursue his current path. At the first Hungarian Council meeting on July 9th, only eight countries, including Hungary, sent a minister. Several EU ambassadors on July 10th suggested a boycott of the informal meeting of foreign ministers in Budapest at the end of August, Boker played down that possibility during his press conference, saying Hungary has received no indication that other member states won't be sending ministers to meetings. 
However, EU diplomats issued a warning saying it doesn't mean retaliation is off the table in future. Given how fast the situation with Budapest has escalated in just the first fortnight of its presidency, nobody is ruling out even firmer pushback from Brussels if Orban crosses more red lines, such as in his dealings with Trump. Brussels may yet consider showing Budapest the red card. But for now, the game continues.